I'm resident of the follow-up for YouTube, Joel Sainz, joined by my buddy Patrick McRae. We're here to continue our reviews of our Christmas list movies. And this one's, well, number mine, it's number five on my list. It has two titles, uh, Dark Angel, I Come in Peace. It's Dollar Stall Thundered. It takes place on Christmas. And that is the only real, f actually, some of the scenes are, are from Lethal Weapon as well, because you see the Christmas trees that are used in the Lethal Weapon movie, uh, where Mel Gibson uh, makes a drug bust. This movie, I why is it number five on the list? Because it's just a pure fun action movie that takes place on Christmas. That's why it's on my list. It's just pure fun, and it has it has an alien that says, "I come in peace," and just kills people. It's a delight. It's a zesty romp. It is. It is Christmassy. Yes. What did you think of the killer frisbee in this movie? Um, I uh, I don't remember. Was there a killer frisbee in the movie? Well, I watched the movie. I swear, but I'm not gonna say, "Oh yes, I remember it." And then you're gonna turn around and say, "Patrick, there was no killer frisbee in this movie." Well, <laughs> well I say killer I that frisbee kids all the time. I say killer frisbee, but the alien took his arm and like there was like this thing on it, and he shot like this disc out, and it would like kill people. Yeah, I saw the tube come out of his hand. Yeah, I saw the tube part. Yeah, uh, but I might have been calibrating the digital processor when uh, when the killer frisbee came out. I saw it. Uh, the 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 FBI agent drink a big glass of wine real fast. Yeah, I saw that part. See, I watched it. <laughs> what did you? Th he he pumps cocaine in, in or heroin, whatever it is, into a person's body, killing them, and then he sucks out their endorphin fins and sells that as drugs in outer space. It's just like Fauci. <laughs> it's just like Doctor Fauci, isn't it? That's what these people think, you know. It, it's. I'm sure Rand Paul just watched this and then held a press conference. That guy, what's wrong with his hair? Anyway, I mean, I mean, seriously, what? It's like a poodle died. <laughs> um, uh, but as a, as a, what, what, you're saying, what about Dr. Fauci? No, uh, I mean, it's a wild, uh, it's a wild scheme. For him to harvest his adrenochrome or whatever it is that he's getting from these people. Yeah, it's. I like the concept of an alien coming to Earth to uh, killing people, pumping them full of drugs, and then getting a drug out of their system to sell it in outer space. It make it gives a more severe consequence to this movie. That okay. This could be literally anybody he does this to. This isn't necessarily he's tar it's not like he's targeting drug addicts in a sense. Yeah. But he does target the mob to get the to get the drugs. Yeah. Which that I like. I thought that was a bit I think they should have did a little more of that. My one complaint of this movie is it is short because it's not a long movie. They should have they should have had this alien just taken on the mob from the get-go. And like the mob thinks it's like the cops, like somebody the cops have hired an outsider. So mm -hmm. they that's why they go out to London's character. I wish they they sort of do do that in a way. Cause they think, oh, but oh, he, he killed our guys. And he tells them, I didn't kill your guys. He goes to him. He's like, I didn't kill him. Um now let me ask you something. If instead if instead what, what they pumped out was frankincense and myrrh. Would it have been more Christmassy? Yeah, it the wise men came from outer space. That's why they're following the stars, their spaceship, and they're yeah. going up to Pharisees and they're like, you know, pumping them full of gold, and then they get frankincense and myrrh, and they bring that to the manger. See, that they, makes it Christmas. I, see, I like that. I like that. They should have had like, like, yeah, they they should have had like the. the the alien cop in this movie. They should have had three alien cops dressed like the wise men. Well, I agree. You know. But that's in every movie. <laughs> I, I like the... Uh, immigration. 
I like the outer space guns they use in this movie. They're very destructive. They like explode shit. Terminator never had a gun this good. No, he had to deal with what he found on Earth. Yeah. He would have had to have had the gun inside him. And so then it would have been like that gun that that, uh, Steve McQueen uses in The Hunter. Yeah. Because that's cylindrical and he could have... I don't want to explain it, but I think you can use your imagination. Yeah. This movie is just fun from start to finish. Dolph Lundgren stars in it. What's your favorite Dolph Lundgren movie you got one? Oh, gosh. There are so many. Uh, Red. Well, no, not Red Scorpion. Uh, of course, Masters of the Universe. Yeah, that's a good movie. It is a good We should do a podcast on that one. That's a, Yeah, we got to get Penny involved with that. <laughs> Did we do that? Yeah, we already did. <laughs> Joel, we've gone mad at the wheel. It's like, look, I'll do a revisit it tour about with the movie. I'm all good for it. I think we should do it on a weekly basis. That movie and see how long it takes us to go insane. <laughs> yeah, we're just like, Penny, do you have a week available? Oh, she would never. She would never. <laughs> She's got too much common sense. I know. But it's fun to include other people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, guys, I can't do that. You're crazy. <laughs> That's what you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just do Masters of the Universe oh, every day and see how many people notice. <laughs> that Now, that's the funny part. That That is worth... That's just a big practical joke. Yeah. Uh, I'll start writing in letters of concern. You boys are like, like, aren't you guys discussing the same movie? And I'll just put, are we? Question mark. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. Um, uh, Masters of the Universe, the movie, is like a book. And a book is like a mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, if an ass stares in, don't expect an apostle to stare out. Yeah. I'll tell you, Frank, Frank Langley as Skeletor in that movie. He was great. Yeah, he's... he's cool. And he enjoyed that part a lot. He speaks yeah. very fondly of playing it. Yeah, I mean, he... Holy shit, he did a great job. Now, speaking of holy shit, this is a very John Carpenter-like film. It in is. In ways. The music yep. is just straight. It's It's... It's just the giant carpenter sound like he wouldn't believe. And they have the guy with the two six guns from Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. He's in it. Yeah, he gets he gets killed by the alien. I thought now he's also in Die Hard as well, like the like the first one. Is he? Does he yeah. play oh he plays John McLean's ex wife? <laughs> no, he plays one of the terrorists, actually. Um but he he's in a bunch of different action movies. He is in this one. I thought like his role would be more important because he's he always plays these interesting characters. Now, Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. He's he's in that movie for, greatly. But this, I love how he he's in the alley up against. What I'm thinking when I first saw this, I'm thinking, oh crap, he's going to attack Lunder's character. No, he just drops dead. Now, wasn't Dolph Lundgren at the time married to Brigitte Nielsen? Yes. Well, when he did Rocky IV, yeah, for sure. I thought they met on the set of Rocky IV. I think that's what it is. Now, when he, when in the movie View to a Kill, he was dating Grace Jones. Okay. Like, because he's in that movie. Like, he's in the background of a, the party scene. Uh-huh. That's why he's there because he's dating Grace Jones at the time. So, you know, I I'll tell you what. When they knew that they physically had to go up against an elderly Roger Moore, they knew they didn't have a chance. Yeah, they're they so physically outgunned by the raw power and lightning fast reflexes of a 98 year old Roger Moore on that movie. What could they do? thought that was a good idea to, to put this poor elderly man against these two epitomes of physical perfection 
Well, the the main, for, all the all the forces of UNICEF couldn't couldn't save him. Well, the main villain in that movie is played by Christopher Walken as well. Uh, I don't think the character's from Maine. I think he's from uh, from from Nazi Germany. Really? Yeah, he's not from Maine. No, no, he's Christopher Maine Walken. Island. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes, you just called everyone from Maine a Nazi. No. <laughs> Joel, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, my God. We need a sample. Joel, fill this and get back to me. Uh, 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 <laughs> it's up here, you know. No, I say Christopher Walken. <laughs> you want Christopher Walken to fill this? <laughs> With what? He's, it's it's stranger and stranger. Keep going. He's he's in, he's the main villain in uh, View to a Kill. Yes, yes, but he's not from Maine. Oh, okay. No. Well, he doesn't have to be, does he? No, no. But it would give him a more charming accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, for sure. Um, but this movie, you're right. It does have a very John Carpenter like sound to it with the music. The action scenes are just pure fun um, from start to finish. I mean, this, as much as this, I, I can't say this is an exact Christmas movie, but it's an it's a Chris it's an action movie set on Christmas. And it's just pure madness from start to finish. And it's a lot of fun. How did you first see this film? I first this <laughs> my mother showed me this film. She rented it. She goes, You want to watch Dark Angel? It's a good my mom. mom, look, my mom, I've said this, she was a corruptible soul. Yeah. And she like she would show us pretty much anything as long as we again, as long as we understood, hey, this is fiction. She'd show us a movie. So she, one night, she goes, you want to watch a really good Christmas action movie? I said, yes. And she rents, She well, she rented a couple of movies. She rented Lethal Weapon. She rented Dark Angel. And we watched those. And you know what? They were a lot of fun. Uh, which was the best of them? Lethal Weapon was better. You know, look. It, it's got a better plot to it, but with Dark Angel, what I liked about it was, keep in mind, this is, po this is Predator is already a movie when this movie hits, and this movie did not feel like a Predator movie, though it had an outer, outer space alien in it. That's what I really was impressed by it, because it doesn't try to rip off a Predator. It doesn't try to do the same thing. No, this alien has his own reasons for being here, and these are those reasons. But then what you have... instead, Nobody was coming from outer space to help out with Predator. This, you had an outer space alien cop come to Earth and try to take this down. But he gets killed, and he's like... I love that... My favorite scene in this movie, when he, he tells... Uh, Oh God! <clears throat> Dolph London's character yes. promise me you'll stop him. He's dying. Like he's promise me you'll stop him. And as corny as that sounds, that's my favorite scene because it it has so much stakes to it. It's like he's he's trusting him. It's like you have to do this. Like this this is not an option. And that's in the car, right. What's that? Is that in the car? Yeah, that's in the car. Like he's because they're his body is filled with cocaine. They're they have cocaine as blood, which is weird. It was like, and you know, you've seen alien where there's acid for blood, but these aliens in this movie have cocaine for blood, and it's like, holy shit, that's insane. Yeah, and it's a hell of a concept. I thought the concept was so amazing i'm thinking how did this not catch on because it's a hell of a story it is it's a story that needs to be told again and again it's a tale as old as time it's beauty and the beast well because if you have one alien that does this you'll have other aliens that do it that's the thing like he's he can't he can't be the only alien who does this 
um, you know, there again, and then he can't be the only cop who's trying to enforce the whole galaxy of space, which is like amazing to me. It's like I love because that that's what I view Dark Angel as. Like when you when you okay, you set this plot on Earth, but the the battle on Earth could affect the whole galaxy. And that's a hell of a thing. The fate of the galaxy is once again in Dolph Lundgren's hands. Yes, it is. Um, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, let's think about genres for a second. Different genres of, of movies. Yeah. And uh, pick three. Just pick three genres. Okay, we'll do... Well, we're doing an action movie, so let's pick action. Action. Uh, let's do horror, and we'll do science fiction. Three great genres. So I want you to think about action for a minute. Somebody comes to you and they say, I'm completely media illiterate, and I am only going to watch one action movie in my life. Yeah. And I want to be able to speak with fans of action movies in a knowledgeable way, where if they find out I've only seen one action movie and they go, oh, my God, well, which one have you seen? And I tell them, they will go, you saw the right one. Yeah. What would you pick? What would I pick? Oh, what? God. I love this movie. I don't know if I'd pick it exactly. But... You know what? I think I would. I would pick Dark Angel. I'd have him show this. Of all the action movies ever made, Jewel, you have to send this person out as an ambassador of action films. And you would pick this one. That shows a loyalty that goes well beyond the psychotic. It does. Uh, seriously, you would pick this movie. Well, I'll tell you what. No. I do now. I do like this movie. I do. Well, that's but fine. I like the movie, but if, but... I, if I could pick one action movie to honestly show to show one person to get them, okay, this is what an action movie really is to me. And to me, that that action movie is much. I know a lot of people like whatever, but I'd probably show them Die Hard. Now that's a really good choice. That's a really good choice. All right. Now the genre, science fiction. Oh, shit. Honestly, I would... If I could pick one movie to show them, yeah. it would really... I would show them... Oh, uh, what's... I'm trying to think of the movie. This is science but, fiction. This has to be that movie. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the name of the movie I'm thinking of, where they uh, shrink the submarine to go into the guy. Inner space. Yeah, I think. Well, no. Now, is it with Donald Pleasance or is it? Yeah, with... yeah, yeah. It's with Donald Pleasance. And you're thinking of a uh, uh, fantastic voyage. Yeah, that would be it. Okay, that's good. Good choice. Uh, okay. Now the third one was horror. Yes. I'm 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 going to show them what my mother showed me. I'm going to show them John Carpenter's Halloween. Because look, I've look I love a lot of my favorite director or or I guess producer is not John Carpenter, it's Val Luton. I've said this to you. Uh-huh. I love Val Luton and what he did. He was very very smart in his filmmaking and what he the movies he produced, I enjoy every goddamn one of them. Um, especially, you know, Out of the Dead, Cat People. My God, I Walked with a Zombie. I, I, lo I showed my kids that movie, and my daughter's like, she sat there and watched it with me, and she wasn't traumatized by it, but still, it's still a good toned movie to watch. Was it Fettus Gray? Is that the, uh, the Coachman? In uh, what is it the the one with uh, Karloff? Well, Carl, that's Body Snatcher. Body Snatcher, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a good movie. 
Yeah, that was so great. Good. I forgot the title, but it's a good movie. Yeah. Val Luton. Yeah. Do you think there was a trend that he started in filmmaking? I do to yeah, to a degree I do. I think he because Luton now Carpenter cuz Carpenter has done things Luton's done, whether he realizes it or not. With Mrs. Luton. Well, Luton Luton would ask the audience what do you really think is going on here? But there's no real, there's no answer. Like cat people, when you watch the original cat people, is or isn't she a cat, right? That's sort of the illusion of it. Okay, yeah. John Carpenter in the like in the thing, he's asked, he's asking you who's the thing in Halloween. The question you know, is, is this guy really crazy? You don't know. You will never know. Like, right, you'll never know. Whether whether he's meaning to ask the audience or not, he is asking it because, okay, where was he? He was a mental institution. Okay, he was in that institution, though, not because he was crazy, but because he was too young to stand trial at the time. But he escapes before he actually does officially stand trial it's like on Halloween night, it's like, holy shit, is this dude crazy? But then you watch the killer himself. It's like, I, I, I sort of did a weird comparison with, I was talking to Mark Gilman about this Yeah, years ago. I said, if you put Michael Myers in Silent Hill, he would not see one monster because he's not insane. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's very, one. He's too aware of what he's doing to be insane or crazy. Okay. He's too calculating in what he does to be insane or crazy. Like he's very, when he puts, when he drops the bodies upstairs, he goes downstairs after Lori comes up and, and he puts a rake up against the door to make sure she can't get the hell out. Sure. That's not somebody who's batshit crazy. That's somebody who's cold and calculating. That's true. And that... takes bold risk. You know. Now, now, Jewel, I'm going to pit you right now against an AI Michael Myers. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, this is true. This is true. So Michael Myers says, this is from one of these AI programs out there. Uh, Michael Myers says, so immediately we're, we're in an interesting area. I assume this is an inner monologue. You're, or maybe this is just about the situation anyway. It says, Michael Myers, you're lost and alone. You can't help but feel something or someone is watching you. Michael stands just out of sight, silent as ever, while tilting his head to the side. Okay, now I'm going to write your response, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to fight him hand to hand. Okay, uh, let's see. But now he stands just out of sight. Okay. Yeah. At this moment, what do you do? At, at, so you don't, you can't help but feel something or someone is watching you, but you don't really know. You know? I'm going to look around. Okay. I look around. Okay. Now, Michael Myers is thinking. He says, conflicted about killing you. I don't think he'd be. Okay, so now what do you do? You don't know he's conflicted about killing you. Well, but, well, if we're talking about the same character, Michael, we are. We are. I just Michael, need a response. What Michael, do you? Michael's going to kill you no matter what. If he's stalking you. Yes, I know, Jewel. That's the commentary. I'm. I'm trying to get the Jewel Sane experience. I'm, 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 saying, I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to. I'm going to find him. You can't see him yet. Uh, well, if I see him. Okay. I keep looking. Looking with night vision goggles. <laughs> I'm going to try and speed this up. Okay. <laughs> and a bottle of Yoohoo. Oh, yeah. You seem like a Yoohoo man. Okay. Pauses. At the use of conflicted, Michael was surprised you can see him. 
and holds a knife to your stomach while kneeling and pants in heavy breaths as he takes a moment to make a decision. What do you do? Uh, I, I grab his hand and move it out the way. Grab his hand and move it out of the way. Yeah. Okay, now let's see what happens, Jewel. Are you excited? I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you surprise, Michael. He looks at you confused. I don't need his knife to kill you. I can use other methods, he thinks to himself, as he quickly switches to a more open hand fighting style. Hmm, I think I want to see you close up first. He grins behind the mask as he begins his moves. Ah, that's, that's very interesting. Very okay. Nice. Joel, what do you do next? I'm, I'm going to fight him. I mean, look, he's coming there to kill the me. The style you will use? I'm going to fight him fist to fist. I, I fight him uh, fist to fist yeah, in so. the Krav Maga style. I'm going to just, I have to add a detail here. Okay, you've been trained by the Israelis, as we know. To be the ultimate killing machine, you know. So you think you're tough, huh? Michael takes a hit but doesn't falter. The crazed look in his eyes glistens with an eerie excitement. Michael switches to a form of Wing Chun he had seen once in a movie. Now it's your turn to feel surprise as you feel him quickly closing the distance. <laughs> Okay, what's your three fight or your three movies? No, this this is I I'm we're going to we're going to see this fight through to the end. <laughs> okay, now uh, I'm going to I'm going to put Michael in a headlock and I'm going to just choke him out. And I get him in a head. I added some to this, but okay, I said I break wind pungently an acrid brew. Then I get him in a headlock. Let's see what how Michael deals with that. <laughs> I can't believe he got me. He smells it before realizing it. you have him in a headlock. Ha 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 ha. He laughs and slowly removes the knife and lifts his hand, slowly placing it behind his head in surprise. Okay, you won. I surrender. He chuckles and whispers in your ear. Just so you know, I like what you did there before releasing the knife. Do you have some weird German fetish? Because I, I think he liked the gas or something. I don't know. Do you have some weird German fetish? Michael stops, tilts his head to the side. You know, he goes, fetish? What's a fetish? He wonders out loud to himself as if trying to piece together the word. Finally understanding, his grin grows. Okay. I Well, I have strange Of course, I'm Michael Myers, he says with a chuckle, you know, proudly claiming this. I have KFC coupons, says Jewel. Let's see if he and uh, let's see let's see if that persuades Michael Myers. What? He gets his ass whooped, and you offer me KFC coupons. You think I'd be that easy? No chance. He chuckles as he spits out a mucus-like substance before kneeing you in the groin. Oh wow. Okay, now I say, okay, what about Long John Silvers? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, what about Long John Silvers? Long John Silvers, his face lightens up, and he pulls out his phone quickly, dialing a number. It's Mommy? Yes. I was just talking to my friend, and he said he likes Long John Silvers. Can you please take me there? Um, okay, love you. Bye. He hangs up smiling. Mommy said she would take us and grabs your arm and starts dragging you off towards the car. She just needs to come and pick us up where we're going. He speaks with the happiest tone ever with all the brutality, and then it ends. <laughs> okay. Joel, what did you think of your AI encounter with Michael Myers? I, I think artificial intelligence should not not write movies. Um, <laughs> I think this was the ultimate conflict. Oh, my God. So you pick an action movie to show somebody. What's yours? 
Oh, boy. So, you know, the line between action and adventure is very thin. Yes, it is. It's, it's almost like Susan Day. Um, uh, it's very thin. I would probably pick uh, uh, um, Die Hard. Yeah. I think Die Hard's a good choice. Yeah. Okay. What about science fiction? Science fiction. Well, Isaac Asimov defined science fiction as man's reactions to changes in technology around him. So probably by that measure, um, I would pick either Charlie, uh, based on Flowers for Algernon, starring um, uh, Cliff Robertson. Yeah. Or I would pick Blade Runner. Yeah, Blade Runner is a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. What about horror? Okay. Uh, that's a really interesting, interesting one. Probably The Exorcist. Yeah. Great pick. Yeah. Great. I mean, those are three really good movies. Wow. That's a triple feature. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Great picks. What did you think about this movie we're talking about? Um, I feel like they they allowed themselves to have more and more fun as the ninety minute running time went on. Yeah. And I I wish they had been more consistent with that. Yeah. I think it it starts deceptively tamely. Yeah. For me, and um, and so there's a danger of losing the audience before it gets really crazy. I think I would have liked to have seen more of the crazy earlier. Yeah, that's me. I I'm with you because like what I remember most of about this movie is just pure nonstop insanity of the action. I mean, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it, if you don't know the context and where everything is going, it takes a little while to get started. Yeah. And and it, it for the, for a while I really thought is this just a police procedural? Maybe I was looking away from the screen during some important mm-hmm. moment, but you know, I mean in Terminator, almost at the very beginning, you know, you get the lightning ball and you know, he arrives and so on and so forth. You know, you, you find out this is going to be a strange film. There's a lot of weirdness going on. I think I was looking for that moment early on in the movie. Yeah. Well, in the movie, like here, uh, the alien arrives by a spaceship. He crashes down. And he comes up out of the, like, the fire and stuff. And uh-huh. the guy's like, he, because there was this guy listening to a Christmas music uh, CD in his car, and yeah. he he comes over and he's like, he's looking at the guy, and the guy's like, "I come in peace," and it's like, "And you go, yeah, no, you no, you don't." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I do wish we would have got the introduction of the mob people first, trying to like make like i like how they stole the drugs in the beginning of the movie sure they should have went from that and it, and instead of taking it to a cop take it to a cover cop who they killed mm-hmm. they should have gotten killed themselves by the alien oh, yeah that, like if they start that movie that way like holy hell well, given that it's at christmas if they had taken it and, and given them to given the drugs to orphans yeah. You know, some, would that have been better? Kind of like a heartwarming, uh, good deed? No, no, not at all. Well, okay. I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. <laughs> you know, I, I hate that phrase, by the way. Agree to disagree. I think it's a puerile phrase. Um, uh, a good friend of mine, the amazing uh, uh, Park Cooper. Why is there a stain on my couch there? I wonder what happened. Anyway, uh, Park Cooper says, uh, I won't even agree to that. He's a good man, thorough. Yeah. Wicker Man Productions. Who's your favorite director, Patrick? Oh man, of all time. Yes. 
My favorite director or the greatest director? Your favorite. Uh, Ken Russell. Ken Russell. Yeah, his work has kind of become vaguely obscure now, but he was a powerhouse uh, once upon a time. He was nominated for Best Director. Uh, do you know Ken Russell? I think I've heard the name. Look up, you've got your computer. Look up, look him up on IMDb. See if you recognize any of these. Ken Russell. Ken Russell. Yeah, Private Eye. Mm-hmm. Or Billy Wilder. He would be the other one. I know who Billy Wilder is. Yeah. I've seen his movies. Well, I suspect you've seen some of these. I've seen Treasure Island. Okay, I don't think Ken Russell directed that. It says director. Really? He directed Treasure Island? Ken Russell? Yeah. Who's in it? It says TV movie is what he... 1995. Uh, let's see. Stars Hetty Baines, uh, Gregory Hall, Michael... Elpick, Charles. Yeah, okay. I I don't know if we're looking at the right Ken Russell. What are some other major movies? Let's see. Let's see all someone the whole the whole collection. Let's see the whole collection. Let's see. I'm going all the way back to like his early. He's an important director. I I. Okay, his first movie, Knights of the Bikes, Peep Show, Amelia, Amelia and the Angel. What? Okay, keep Lord, going. Lordis Poets London, Archi- uh-huh. Architecture of Entertainment, this whole, House. This is, yeah, I, K-E-N. I can't, well, I, I'm shocked. R-U-S-S-E. Well, I'm going all the way back to the beginning of the Well, that's not pushing. I can have heard of that. No one has. Now, Ken Russell, here we go. Woman in Love. Yeah, okay, here we go, yeah. Monitor. Uh-huh. Well, uh, yeah. The Music Lovers. The Music Lovers, that's a great movie. The Boyfriend. Hilarious. Savage. Messiah. Messiah. Mahler. I don't even know her. Liz Tom, Liz Tomania. He directed Tommy. He directed Altered States. He directed Lair of the White Worm. He he directed um, Gothic. Um, he directed Altered States. I think I might have mentioned that. Um, uh, yeah, he uh, he's a hell of a director. The Devils, which Warner Brothers still won't release uh, full full bore on on home video in the United States, even though they've done special editions in other countries. Why? Uh, That's a very good question. It's a very good question. It it might have to do with it pivoting around a controversial rape of Christ scene. Uh, uh, Yeah. there There are more controversial movies than that released in the United States. You know, I guess you can get kicked out of Dark Shadows groups on Facebook for less. <laughs> this is true. Hi, this guys. Is... I'm watching you. <laughs> somebody somebody asked me once about, like, the, like, Dark Shadows groups. I said, listen, what whatever the rules for groups are, as long as you're posting dark shadow stuff it should be fine it should be but groups get contentious I, uh, I so Certainly. That, that's the warning i gave to somebody one like just groups get contentious so sure we'll write it off for that <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, well here's the thing it's like with groups, when you talk about like Facebook groups, it's like I don't have time to sit there and monitor everybody's group or just what's going on in other people's groups or even like. So when I hear somebody like complain about a group, it's like if I've never been in the group, it's like I can't tell you. Now, what if you're an administrator in one? 
Well, I have my own group. That's the thing. Uh huh. And like that, I do try to monitor. If somebody sends me a complaint, I'll look at what the complaint is. I'll investigate it. I'm not just going to make a judgment call. You know, I'll look at it first. Like if when somebody was putting stuff that wasn't, like somebody was trying to sell spam, like dark shadow spam stuff. So I took that stuff out. That they those people got kicked because I gave them one. I gave them two warnings. And three strikes, you're out. Like, if I have to give you two warnings, the third time, you're gone. Like, I, I have well, a baseball rule. That's good. You know, like, because I'm a baseball guy. I love baseball. But, uh, or as they put in Japan, baseball. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but with groups, with, with other people's groups, it's like, I just try to follow the rules. And I think that's the thing. If you're following the rules, should you get kicked? No. No, nobody should be kicked if you're following the person's rules. But here's the thing, too. If you leave a group, you should be allowed to leave your group. You are allowed to join it. It's your choice to join, come and go in a group. Like, I'll, I'll give an example. Like, I added somebody I knew to my group. They left the group. I didn't message them like any obscenities or nothing. I joined it just so I could leave. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. That's hard. Oh my God. That's not true. Oh, no. That's no. not true. But uh, this movie is uh, Dark Angel. I come in peace. Is just a fun movie to watch. Whether it's Christmas or not, it's but I did put it number five on my list because it's not so much about Christmas, but it is there is a relationship in the movie and it does teach you about you know, just because you work for somebody doesn't mean you should trust them with the FBI. Um, you know, and sometimes you know, if you don't know somebody, it doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to their advice. True, it's true. I mean, there are lessons here, yeah, there are some. I'll tell you my favorite, though I think he was, I like the movie. My favorite Dolph Lundgren movie is The Punisher. It's though a, I don't think he should have played The Punisher. Who should have played The Punisher? Charles Bronson. He would have made a good Punisher. Like, like, like with all those Death Wish movies, and basic look, the Punisher was created basically because of Death Wish. I mean, come on. Like he yeah. was cre created because of Paul Kersey. Still Kersey after all these years. Well, that's the thing. Like I Bronson's a hell of an actor, too. I mean, he doesn't and he doesn't get a lot of dialogue in some of those movies. It's like if he would have got to play the Punisher, he'd have got a lot of dialogue. So, I, agree. Like, I agree now to me his best action movie he's got a lot of them but one of my personal favorites is the original mechanic that movie's a lot of fun it's a good movie yeah really really fun bronson action movie with with the guy from uh airwolf he's in the movie uh uh ernest borgnine no, the other one. Um, oh my god, Jan Michael Vincent. Yes, yes. Okay, I knew it wasn't Alex Cord. <laughs> Alex Cord. I don't know. Other than being an airwolf, what was he in? He played Dylan Hunt in one of the Gene Roddenberry Planet Earth Future titles. Oh. Okay. Yeah, one of those pilots that he did. Oh, cool, cool. I didn't know that. I, like the most I remember him from is Airwolf. Yeah, no, yeah. because I I loved his character. He was really interesting. A string fellow hawk, or or are you talking about Alex Cord? Alex Cord was interesting. Yeah, he was, he was, he was playing Nick Fury. Yeah, because he pretty had the eye patch, and so yeah. eye patch equals Nick Fury. Pretty much, he was. I mean, yeah. He, he was so what did we know funny. about his character in Airwolf? What's that? I don't. What do, what do we know about his character in Airwolf? I don't remember. That he 
he was in charge of the Airwolf program, but he he didn't des- he didn't necessarily he helped design Airwolf, but so did so- the person who also helped design it stole Airwolf from him. The the like the first pilot who knew about the weakness, he who helped design it too, who stole it, and he was a very sinister man. It turns out. Um, Stringfellow Hawk was the backup pilot. He was the second pilot in line to this guy, and they hire Stringfellow Hawk to steal Airwolf back. That's the plot of the first episode. What was it? Weakness? What was it? You couldn't feed it after midnight, or you couldn't. No, have that. no, no, no. The the like where the uh, ex- power or whatever thing was or gas thing was. And like the front, like at the very front, it was very small. It, it's sort of like the Star Wars uh, Death Star weakness in a sense. If you shoot it there, the the helicopter will explode. So like right in the nose. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Did they did they think of like putting a coaster or something in front of it to? Well, nobody knew where to shoot other than like a couple people, and it's like the one person died. Like. This the guy who originally st- who steals it, who's the first pilot, he gets killed off by Stringfellow Hawk. He blows him to pieces and with Airwolf. Um, because he had, that guy killed Stringfellow Hawk's girlfriend, who was he met through Alex Cord and she was working for Alex Cord. He like put her in the desert and he dehydrated her to death. Like it's like Jesus. Like how- Did he get with his dry sense of humor? <laughs> That's a good my question. What well, what's your favorite 80s television show? Probably uh, well like like just television show that was made in the 80s? Yeah. Or my favorite 80s television show. Oh, um QED. Look it up. With Sam Waterston. Six episodes. It was fantastic. It was way ahead of its time. And we'll stay here while you watch every episode. (laughs) QED is a 1982 adventure television series set in Ottawa, England, starring Sam Waterstone. As Professor Quentin Everett, the really yeah. the professor was a science detective in the mold of Sherlock Holmes. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, and the series had a smatter uh, smattering of what would later be called steampunk in the show. The lead character was known primarily by his initials Q E D. The reference here is that QED usually stands for Quad Array Demonstration. Demonstratum. Demonstratum, sorry. A step, a statement signaling the end of a proof. However, characters would sometimes state the initials to represent quiet, easily, quite easily done. The series was broadcast during March and April 1982 on the CBS television network in the United States and by a variety of ITV companies in the United Kingdom. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was a really good show. Um, so, yeah, I'd say QED. Cool, cool. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, why not? That's awesome. That's All right, Jewel. I think we have talked this to death. Yes, we have. First of all, I want to thank you. For joining me, of course it was fun. <laughs> which uh, which film do you want to do next? One of yours? Absolutely, you, but you pick which one. Um, let's do. Oh God, we did on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Let's do Christmas Story. I think that's great. That's your number one, I believe. Yeah. Number All right. One. Let's do that one. When you undo it. Uh, what's today? Today's Saturday. Uh, prob- well, I probably could watch it by, tom- by tomorrow night if you want to do it tomorrow night. Let's do it tomorrow night. Why not? Okay. You want to do 10? Uh, what time do you want? Uh, 10. Let's do it. Okay. 10. 10 p.m.? 
10 p.m. tomorrow night, folks, Christmas Story with Patrick McRae. That's his number one pick. And then, hey, Monday, we are going to do Dark Shadows episode 706. I'm there. Green Acres, we're there. See you, Patrick. You have a good one, buddy. Okay.